There are many tales of the land without sky, and it seemed to me as if my grandmother knew them all. Grandmother Drake. She always told me that in such a place no star of hope could shine, nor sun of life, nor moon of love, unless the people themselves became lights in the darkness. I remember there was one story I could never hear enough. It was the heroic tale of a very wise man who lived at the time of the Great Migration. The surface had been stricken with cataclysmic natural disasters, forcing people to leave their shattered lands for a dark and painful refuge beneath the sea. The man, known as McGregor, was a visionary scientist and one of the last prophets on Earth. He probed the limits of scientific knowledge in a dozen fields, trying to discover the tantalizing secrets that remained. As I listened, I often imagined that I myself was a descendant of the great McGregor. The story began in the 22nd century with his discovery of a mysterious sea creature on a beach in northern Scotland. No larger than the palm of McGregor's hand, it looked like a horseshoe crab. The scientist took the creature to one of his laboratories and examined it more closely, and what he discovered was so unspeakably horrifying that fear and dread almost drove him insane. Then, when he and his staff tried to incinerate the creature, it refused to burn. When they tried to crush it, the hydraulic press shattered under the strain. I pestered my grandmother to tell me what was so horrifying about the creature, but she would only lower her voice and say, It was made of flesh and gold, and of another metal that does not exist on Earth, and it could reproduce itself. Woe betide the man who finds such a creature. Woe betide him, because legend says it will be his ruin. Thoughts of such creatures still lurking in the seas, still reproducing themselves, gave me endless nightmares. In my daydreams, I pretended that I too would become a scientist and invent a weapon capable of destroying those creatures once and for all. My grandmother always said a single person could change the world with their mind, but whether that change was for better or worse was up to them. A single individual could sway the world as much as the masses, she said, if they were right. McGregor soon turned his mind to constructing incredible submarines the world had only dreamt of before, and in so doing laid the foundation of submarine technology for centuries to come. Without his knowledge, humanity could never have evolved enough to occupy the oceans. I always feared the ocean's black waters, but I also longed to defy their wretched confines. Like McGregor before me, I wanted to make discoveries and adventure with the likes of the brave mercenaries my grandmother spoke about. I was nine years old when word of my mother's death reached us. She'd been managing Drake Enterprises, the family shipping company, which at that time included a respectable fleet of freighters. Then pirates pillaged her ship off Cape Horn. Her body was never recovered. My father, Alonzo Drake, born Alonzo de Granada, was heartbroken. Three years later, without so much as a goodbye, he left us to make his fortune in the oceans. I never understood why he abandoned his only son and his family business just like that. Grandmother always said he'd gone off with his brother, another adventurer. When I myself began to dream of adventures in Aqua's inky depths, I feared I had inherited my father's restless blood. My grandmother thought him irresponsible and said he'd probably found a grave on the sea floor by following the tracks of an angel. That was her poetic way of saying he'd lost his mind. After father disappeared, grandmother took over the company, but contracts were few and far between. Soon our financial backers withdrew and the fate of Drake Enterprises was sealed. When I grew up, I worked as a pilot on our last remaining freighter, the Harvester. My nightmares grew fainter over time, but my daydreams of life as an adventurer held fast. When we could no longer afford our family home in Neopolis, my grandmother and I ended up in the Pacific amid the dangerous and chaotic seas of the northern tornado zone. There I supplied stations and scattered habitats with chemosynthetic protein and other nourishment. My grandmother died quietly in her sleep, and soon after, I, William Drake, decided to follow the tracks of the angels too, as my father had before me. I decided to become the hero of my own story, a man who wanted to change a part of the world and learn the last of Aqua's secrets, like the scientist had before me. Yet I didn't reject my grandmother's teachings. It's the hidden things that form our reality. 
You must never be too close to what's going on around you. You can comprehend a whole seamount only from a distance. I knew I wanted to fight like the mercenaries in Grandmother's Tales. Perhaps I would confront my mother's killers in battle, or maybe just bring a little light to this miserable world without sky. And possibly find some hope for myself there as well. And then again, perhaps I was only a foolish little boy. My grandmother used to say that I was brave without cause and confident without reason. A fish without fins, she said, adrift in aqua far too young and headed for disaster. <laughs> 